As I was preparing for this conference, um, I told a friend the title of my workshop. Um, and his almost immediate response was, how much time do you have? Um, I got similar variations to almost the exact same response from almost every gay man I spoke to. Um, so either all of the gay men that I know have a very similar sense of humor, or there is an implied sense in our community that uh, gay men and young gay men in particular find something about sexuality especially challenging. Um, the inspiration for my presentation today um, has risen mostly from <coughs> workshops that I've run for uh, young, and gay, uh, young gay and bi uh, men in East London over the last two years. And so a lot of what I'm going to be talking about has uh, come from uh, my learnings in these workshops. So I'm going to start by briefly looking at what we even mean by sexuality or being sexual. And then looking at the two main ways uh, that gay men find uh, in the challenges of sexuality. So experiencing our own sexual being um, and encountering our sexuality with others. So to start off with, what do we even mean by uh, being sexual? Um, I recently ran a workshop on exactly this topic, so sex and being sexual. And one of the questions explored was, um, what does being sexual mean to you? It's a pretty simple question to ask. Uh, but in reality, it's quite difficult to, dis to define or describe. Uh, but here are some of the responses from that particular workshop for the men there. So a feeling of connect being connected with my body, a sense of possibility, feeling alive, powerful and energetic, being wanted and desired, feeling uninhibited, being more engaged with others. Um, so there is a sense of something about uh, being sexual that is linked uh, with being embodied, with our experience of possibility, uh, and a primal sense of the energy of what it means to be alive. What's interesting from this, and what I've noticed from a lot of people, is that uh, some people experience sexual as mainly something to do with how they experience themselves, uh, while others, others experience being sexual as how they relate or feel about others. Obviously, this is only a small sample of men, and I'm sure there are lots of other definitions um, in, in, in the gay scene about what being sexual means. Um, I, I've been personally fa fascinated by the question of what it means to be sexual um, since puberty. Uh, so, since moving to London at 18 um, and exploring my sexuality, um, I was struck by how very few spaces there were in London to explore um, issues of sexuality in an open and authentic way. So in 2015, I decided to start hosting my own uh, group discussions to explore different areas on sexuality. Um, and after fir the first few groups, I started facilitating them as group workshops um, and opened them up to the public. Uh, the structure is quite simple. Um, they are fortnightly. Um, there are drop-in sessions open to gay by men. Um, they are carried out in a freestyle group discussion. Um, each workshop has on average about eight men, although the, the least popular workshops got one or two men, and the most popular workshops got something about 20 men. And the age range for these workshops um, ranged from men in their early 20s to men in their late 60s. However, most attendees were between the ages of um, mid-20s to mid-40s. Out of the 30-odd workshops that uh, we've covered so far, um, we've dealt with 25 different topics on sexuality. And here is the list of these topics so far. Um, the, th the three most um, attended workshops were experiences of singleness and relationships in the gay world, um, race and sexuality, and sexual roles and identity. I wonder if anybody wanted to shout out what they felt were the three least attended workshops, or at least what the workshop was that attracted only one participant, when usually there would be about eight or nine or ten participants. Does anybody want to shout out a guess? Sexual fetishes. Anybody else? Yes, yeah, um, the three least attended workshops were Cruising for Sex, Shame, Guilt and Fear of STDs, and Promiscuity, What Does a Lot Mean? 
Uh, when I calculated the data to, to come up with this, um, I was actually really struck um, by this. Um, obviously, there could be lots of different reasons why these were the, uh, the least attended workshops. Uh, but I think that it says that something about our community in terms of uh, there are a lot of topics that we still find very difficult to talk about. And despite the uh, big leaps and changes that we've experienced in the last um, couple of decades, uh, a lot of our sexuality is shrouded in shame. And I'm sure as a lot of you here know, uh, shame and experiences that induce shame are amongst the most <coughs> difficult experiences to talk about. So perhaps it's with a sense of naivety that I would run a workshop like uh, Shame, Guilt and Fear and STDs and expect a big turnout. Uh, despite that, I, think, I still think it's important uh, to continue creating and holding spaces which specifically address issues of our sexuality that uh, we would rather not confront. And aspects of our se sexuality that isolate us from ourselves uh, and make us turn away from our worlds. Especially since a lot of these issues are issues that men have told me that they do not even um, explore fully in their own personal therapies. So turning now to the two different modes of uh, challenges in experiencing sexuality, and the first one of experiencing our own sexual being. Um, and I think the, the key question for this is how do I experience being sexual? So how, how, where do we need to go, as you're sat here, as I'm sat here, where do we need to go internally in order to get in touch with our sexual being? And in relation to the challenges for young men in, in this particular aspect, uh, the questions that I have been, that I noticed that I've been listening out to over these last two years is, number one, what are the aspects of my experience that I cannot tolerate? And number two, what do I do or how do I find myself being to get away from those aspects? Uh, let's look at this in a bit more detail. Um, I think the starting point uh, with a lot of the challenges is this notion of identity. Who am I? Am I gay? Am I bi? Am I straight acting? Am I camp? Am I femme? Am I mask? Am I a dom? Am I sub? Am I a puppy, a bear, a twink, a jock, an otter? Are these identities something that I have chosen? And if so, why? Or have they, be for have they been forced onto me by others? Is there something intolerable about not labeling or defining myself? Um, the workshops that focus most on that question, who am I, um, revolved a lot around um, questions of identity. So topics like who are we online? Uh, race and sexuality, sexual roles and identity. And my uh, experience of facilitating these workshops has been that there's been a lot of excitement and nervousness in the room. As men were excited at, the, at discovering um, how others experience similar identities and sharing and listening to experiences. But there is also an acknowledgement that when we adopt an identity, there is a part of us that is revealed but also a part of us that is concealed. And so the challenge has been to engage with the concealed parts of ourselves that are hidden or disowned when we identify in a certain way. Um, the second question in relation to uh, challenges of experiencing our own sexual being is what do I find myself desiring or wanting? And invariably for a lot of young gay men, when they open up to authentically what it is that I desire as a gay man, um, this can often trigger a lot of shame. This was very evident <coughs> in the workshop on exploring sexual fantasies. Um, and shame is obviously a difficult emotion to encounter, and I'm not even sure it's possible or even desirable to eliminate shame completely from sex, because shame, can, shame in small doses can be an aphrodisiac. But it is the unwillingness to open up to our own shame um, or our attempts to overcoming it through shamelessness, which often results in even more difficulties. And what we find with challenges on the first two questions is that a lot of men go through um, the next series, which is what does desiring something, for example, say about me? 
is something wrong with me? Am I alone in this? And what happens as men go through these questions is that uh, they are not able to tolerate or be with whatever results from this. So a, a large part of their sexuality is split off. So in reality, um, as opposed to how gay men would like to define what being sexual with, with, is, uh, the reality of being sexual is very different. There's a lot of shame for who um, a lot of young gay men feel they are or what they want. Uh, there's a lot of guilt for how they express themselves sexually. Uh, there often is a lot of fear of um, what uh, being out of control or uh, contracting uh, different STIs. Um, so a lot of their uh, sexuality is split off. And if they allow themselves to be sexual, they, uh, there's a sense that they will be overwhelmed and out of control, which is linked to this notion of being in a discomfort and being in a state of need. Um, this feeling that they constantly need to do something about their sexual appetite, that it, it is terrifying to be hungry. And if you experience this hunger or this sexual desire, you need to do something with it. You need to squash it by either having a lot of sex or masturbating. Um, and also, finally, this, this notion that um, sex is limited to specific times and places, and it doesn't become part of just what it means to be an embodied human being. So moving on now how to, on to how we encounter our sexuality with others. Um, and in particular, the challenges in being subjects and objects of desire. Uh, the lens through which I am going to examine this is um, online hookup apps. In particular because it seems that a lot of young gay men spend a lot of their sexual lives online. Since the launch of Grindr exactly <laughs> eight years ago today, so the 25th of March 2009, and the proliferation of a lot of other uh, online hookup apps, um, what we're noticing is that gay men are meeting in different ways, but the dynamics of sex are changing, and also how we experience ourselves sexually is changing. Uh, one of the themes that seem to resonate a lot with young gay men is this notion of the streamlining of sexual identities, roles and preferences into very clear, um, unambiguous, marketable categories. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of screenshots that I found online uh, to see exactly what I'm talking about. So, hi, are you looking? Top or bottom? Top, are you safe? Hi there, hello. What are you up to, handsome? Top verse. <laughs> hey buddy, two bottom boys here. As long as you're non-seen and straight acting. We are both bottoms, straight acting and non-seen. To begin with, I think it's worth noting how desensitized a lot of us have in the gay community <coughs> have become to such brutally transactional exchanges. Um, in order to engage, the message is quite clear you need to define yourself. You need to tell me how I can expect to interact with you. So what happens is conversations that end up pigeonholing each other. And usually the pattern is something along the lines of, are you horny, top or bottom or verse, what are you into, how big, and do you have any pics? So if we put for a moment the transactional nature of these exchanges to one side, what a lot of gay men are being subtly invited to do in order to be wanted and accepted is to define how they will interact. And having spoken to a lot of men and facilitated workshops on this issue, what, what we're noticing is that there is some sort of a spectrum and a motivation for why men interact in this way. So, uh, the motivation, uh, i.e., why do men interact in this brutally transactional way? Um, and on the one hand, it feels like uh, a lot of men are doing this because uh, the uncertainty about the sexual encounter is reduced. And so men feel more in control and safe from encountering the unknown 
and from just being open to what will happen with somebody that they don't know. But also, uh, it reduces the chance of a genuine subject-to-subject -subject encounter and achieves the objectification of the other. So it's much easier to deal with an object rather than a subject who has needs and wants. Um, but of course, at the same time, the more we control and contain and manage and reduce the uncertainty of a sexual encounter, we are also eroding the sense of the possibility of sex and the full embodied presence of being sexual in a sexual encounter. <coughs> so what happens is that sex often becomes less of an exploration and more of, rep of a repetition. And in a very weird way, sex becomes less sexual and more masturbatory. Having said that, there's a, quite a big spectrum of what people want out of sex. Some people want intimacy, some people just want to get off, some people want to have sex for pleasure, some people want to escape boredom or loneliness or stress, and some people see it as a way of getting into a relationship. <coughs> Again, I'm going to look at a couple of examples of how people communicate what they want out of sex from some uh, online examples. Online equals cock. Not much... <coughs> Empty on the inside, only getting the next big meat in my mouth or hole is my real motivation for this era that I'm passing through, at least for the next few months. Fortunate enough to have an amazing ass. No fucking around, just get straight into it. Be fucked properly with a big cock. I don't like to give out many photos. If, if you don't like me in person, just say so and I'll leave straight away. <coughs> Other men do it slightly differently. Um, hey, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? Well, I'd like to say well, but my grandpa passed away this afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, pretty bummed. Well, I hope you, find, you and your family find peace in this sad time for you all. Thank you. Are you hung? <laughs> I, I think there's quite, something quite telling about our reaction to, to something like this, which is almost like a laughing at the absurdity of it. But there's a, there's a, there's a kind of horror of the disconnect that people are having in, an, in, a, in a supposedly genuine connection. And there, there's, something was happening, and then there's a huge disconnect. Um, but either way, uh, whichever way men are portraying of what they want out of sex, um, what, what, what is noticed is that there's a very common experience of aggression uh, in being very vocal about what people want or how they want the, how they want to be perceived, which in turn provokes others to be aggressive. Um, and what does seem clear is that regardless of what people want out of sex, um, what the culture of online apps encourage is the objectification of ourselves as bodies to be worked on and improved, and sexual machines to be put into use. And online apps create the perfect environment to experience a cocktail of lust, aggression, validation, frustration, rejection, and despair. And lots of men spend hours online distracting themselves in an incredibly all-encompassing experience that promises the fulfillment of pleasures and longings, but also provides a space to experience aggression and rejection. Uh, oh, this is the last one. Um, so, so trying to wrap all of this together, I think there's something slightly misleading about the title of my presentation. Because I feel on some level it suggests that it is possible to be sexual and not find that challenging. Like it's possible to be on fire and not burn. I believe that sexuality is intrinsically challenging however we decide to approach it. Um, if we try to get everything under control, we drain the vitality out of life. If we open up to our urges and impulses, we also open up to the unbearableness of being overwhelmed and out of control. I believe sexuality is challenging for everyone, regardless of age, gender, or orientation. Because on some level, it gets us, to, it gets us in touch with our vulnerability. Um, it shakes us to our core, um, and it makes us confront the fact that we are not self-sufficient. So we also have to face what it means to be embodied, both in ourselves and in others. Uh, but I believe that from that space of um, creativity, which is encountering ourselves and others um, in a sexual space, there is the possibility 
of getting a deeper sense of what it means to be alive. Thank you very much.